All right, we're live. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we will go ahead and get started. Uh, I want to first start uh, by saying for all those Star Wars fans out there, may the 4th be with you. Um, so I'm Robert Theobald, Small Business Ombudsman and Vice President of Small Business Services. And I'm glad to have you here with us today uh, on this Tuesday. We are excited to uh, have a great presentation today. Um, so we're looking forward to that. But first, we'd like to jump in. And as always, we want to share our appreciation for all of our community partners. We could not do these boot camp sessions without them and their expertise, their time and their efforts. Uh, it is very much appreciated. The small business boot camps are about helping small businesses work through the COVID crisis and return stronger than ever. It is a statewide initiative supported by all of those community partners. And besides the boot camp webinars, we have a resource collective and a content library. On our website for the boot camp, you can find the upcoming sessions. Uh, and on those, you can register for those upcoming sessions. Uh, you probably went to that site today uh, or pre before today to register for today's session. But as well on the boot camp on the boot camp website, we have our resource collective and our and our archive. The archive is a great content library that has been created over the past year with over 140 of these sessions recorded and shared on there uh, for you to access at no cost and whenever you want. It's, it's a tremendous resource available to you. On our resource collective, we have our tools and guides that are available for from our community partners to help small businesses uh, during this time. There's a lot of great information. This is a sample list of the items on the resource collective. We have unemployment guides, we have restaurant information, construction, manufacturing, uh, cosmetology. Uh, a lot of great information can be found um, on, on the resource collective. Additionally, on our, the Arizona Commerce Authority's COVID-19 business resource website, you can get a lot of great information. We have business guidance on there. We have a page set up for financial resources that go through the federal, state, and local programs to help support the financial side of the small businesses uh, during COVID-19, along with a lot of other great information. So it is a great website to also favorite. Some of the programs that the ACA has to support small businesses are small business services. Uh, we can help with navigating through the SBA programs, working with the small business development centers, working with SCORE and the other non or other no cost small business support programs that are out there. We can help connect you with local banking contacts if you're needing that and, and share the latest developments. We also have our workforce program and our workforce program can be an employer liaison looking to hire a new staff. They've got federal programs to help with training and upskilling your employees. Um, and then our Arizona MEP is the Manufacturing Extension Partnership and they work with manufacturers to address their COVID needs, address their, and work with them on their growth plans and needs. And they are a great program as well. Additionally, for those looking to start a business during uh, this time, we have our small business checklist. And the checklist program is an online interactive tool that helps people identify the commonly requested licensing, registration, and compliance needs at the local, state, and federal levels. Um, it's a very in-depth list, and it's a great resource as you're looking to start a business or relocate one to Arizona. Additionally, we like to mention the state's COVID-19 information and resource website. Uh, this website is not just for business, but it is everything related to COVID-19. It's ArizonaTogether.org. So with that, I want to transition and jump into some updates. Uh, for those restaurant owners out there, the Restaurant Revitalization Fund application has opened. It opened on Monday. Uh, you can find the, the page to apply on the COVID-19 Restaurant Revitalization Fund webpage on the SBA's website. Uh, these links on this page, will also post those in the chat so you can access them so you don't have to scramble to write them down. Additionally, the Shuttered Venue Operator Grant has reopened. So if you are uh, or know someone that has a 
venue that qualifies for that grant, uh, that option is available now. Additionally, over the past few weeks, the IRS has uh, shared some information on available tax credits for paid leave uh, for employers with you know, doing paid leave for employees uh, related to COVID-19, COVID-19 vaccines, et cetera. Uh, so this is a link to some of those tax credit information. And then in general, the COVID-19 relief options, the SBA has a great website that covers all the different programs that they've got going on right now. Um, and so we've got that link for you. So with that, let's look at uh, this week's sessions, uh, boot camp sessions, and next week's boot camp sessions. So this week, we've got a two-part series on how to leverage a podcast to grow your business. We're excited to have Andre Jones with us uh, sharing these two sessions and excited to hear how podcasting can help grow your existing business and engage your, your customers. Next week, we also have two great marketing sessions. Uh, we've got Marketing to the Right Customer with Monique James. Uh, from Renegade Media, and then we have a partnership session with Google on Grow with Google, Reach Customers Online with Google. Um, we are doing that with Dave Delaney. He is a Google presenter, and when you go on to register, it's going to take you to a slightly different registration page. We will, be not, we will not be using the Zoom platform for that webinar. Um, we were doing it in partnership or co-hosting it with Google. Um, and so we'll be using their platform for this boot camp on May 13th. Uh, but we're excited to have those sessions. They're going to be a great couple of weeks of uh, boot camps. So with that, we're going to turn the time over to Andre Jones. Andre is a CEO of Octavia Digital Media. He's uh, been a presenter with us before on some other topics. And uh, so with that, we are going to go ahead and turn it over to Andre and let Andre start his presentation. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Can you hear me just fine? Yes, sound great. Yay, great. I love it when I sound great because that means things are working like they're supposed to. Good morning to everybody out there. I uh, hope all of you are doing well, taking great care of yourself and staying healthy. Here it is, the presentation of all presentations, how to leverage, how to leverage a progress to grow your business. And this is part one of a two-part series. You're really, really going to enjoy this one. Um, let's get right on into it. Let's start with a quick introduction of who I am. Uh, let me figure out and make sure I know where my mouse is at all times. Who am I? My name is Andre Jones, the owner, CEO of Octavia Media. I have a master's in educational psychology, bachelor's in computer science, statistics, as well as sociology. I'll tell you how all that ties into podcasting a little bit later. Uh, again, owner of, of Octavia Media LLC, as well as the host of All About the Win podcast and the co-host of Get Your Barbecue On with Ken Alexander, two podcasts I'm going to refer to a lot during this presentation. Who is Octavia Media? Very simple. We were created in response to the rapid growth of digital marketing as well as digital strategy. And our job is to create unique content that will stand out against the competition and most importantly, really show who you are through storytelling. Our goal is to increase and build your brand and empower your business. So let's go ahead, let's get right into it about how to leverage a podcast to grow your business. And let's start with the first question that's on everyone's mind, especially when I go out and about and I'm talking to people and I say, hey, I have a podcast. You said, listen, they're like, great. So what is a podcast exactly? Well, fantastic question. So a podcast, a quick, a quick, brief history on podcasts is that podcasts actually started back in the 1980s thanks to the invention of recording equipment becoming more portable and that could be used at home as well as in an office space or anywhere else that people can use it very quickly um i remember my very first podcast was in my room it was like 1992 or three i was in my room I hit record on this like 
uh, device that I had. It was like an alarm clock with recording feature. I hit record and my friend and I just started talking. And as we were talking, we're asking questions. I mean, it was a deep conversation, as deep as uh, seventh graders can have, right? And um, at the end, when I listened to it, I'm like, this is really cool. Believe it or not, that is an example of our early podcast, which we would call audio, excuse me, audio blogging. So here we go. 2004 happens. And when 2004 happens, this wonderful device on your screen um, came about and that changed everything. That was when the rise of podcasts actually happened. And believe it or not, as of today, there's over 100,000 English spoken uh, podcasts created around the world with many more being created every single day. Now, what is a podcast? As I stated earlier, it's generally people talking about topics that are of interest of the audience. And there are very, there's many, and I mean many, I mean many different variety of podcasts um, that you can find. Anything you can think of, there is a podcast show about it, guaranteed. Maybe you're interested in growing your business. There are thousands of podcasts that are focused on entrepreneurship as well as business ownership. Maybe just maybe you're interested in fishing. You know, one of your favorite hobbies is fishing, something I've never done before. And something that I would like bring up, people are like, you've never been fishing? No, I've never been fishing. Um, there's fishing podcasts to teach you how to become a better fisher. Um, there is a podcast, like I said, about anything from ghost stories, FBI investigations, love, sex, marriage, whatever your flavor, uh, wherever your flavor is, there are thousands of them. And the format of them are just about the same as I described earlier. Um, the format is pretty much that, hey, um, I am talking with a good friend of mine. This good friend and I are talking about, um, about what it's like to be a fisher. And the guest who I have is someone who is better at fishing than I am. And he's gonna give you, or he's gonna have a different way of fishing than I have. And now this person's gonna talk about that and how it could benefit your business. Um, it's so funny, my dog just opened a door with his nose and just walked out. He was tired of me he talking already. All right, so, um, it's, and like I said, usually it's about a it's a it's a it's a, um, it's a guest or a host who has a microphone. He's telling a story or interviewing guests, or it's a little bit of both. These shows are very easy to create as long as you have some good solid content that's geared for your listeners and not geared to you, which we'll talk about a little bit later. All right. So we got that. So let's talk about getting to know your audience. Let's really get to know who your audience is. Who listens to a podcast? This sounds so foreign to some. Well, believe it or not, um, how people listen to podcasts, let's first go there, is that they actually stream it to their device. Maybe they have it on their phone. They have like uh, an app like Spotify or Google Podcasts or Apple Podcasts. Or maybe they go on the internet and go onto the website of the person who has the podcast and they listen to it from there. Regardless, it is a streamed uh, a sound, it's a streamed uh, service that they're listening to. Basically, it's a stream, uh, it is a streamed <laughs> audio file that you're listening to. And there are over a hundred podcast platforms out there. However, the top four that you will hear people listen to podcasts from are going to be Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and now Pandora, who just recently got into the podcast world. With Spotify being the number one way that people are listening to podcasts. Now, Generally, many people who listen to podcasts are people who are either on the road for a long period of time, or they are someone who wants to listen to something different than music. They prefer to have uh, uh, someone talking because that way they don't feel as alone. When I'm on long road trips, I love to listen to podcasts because of the fact that it feels like there's other people in the car and it, it um, doesn't make it a drive so lonely, if, you, if that makes sense. 
or people can be working and have the podcast going in the background. It's no different than when people listen to Howard Stern back in the day um, or listen to morning radio when some of the, um, I think all radio stations still do this, have the morning radio shows and you're listening to it while you're working. It's something in the background while you're doing something else. Um, there are folks generally interested in either listening to something new or wanting to learn something new or want to be inspired and entertained by a great story. A podcast for a business owner is a platform to share their story about their journey, their struggle, their triumph and victory, as well as the many lessons that come along the way. However, the most important piece to any show is to remember that the audience will listen to your show as long as you're geared to any of these things on the screen and be inspired, educated, or entertained. If you do one, fine. If you do two, good. If you could do all three, you're a master and you should be doing this for a living. And we're gonna talk about that more, also a little bit more a little later. Now, the listener who's listening to the podcast is going to learn something about you. So you as a host, you're going to uh, show more of an authentic side. This is more like an intimate setting more than it is anything else. It's an intimate conversation with you, your listeners, and as well as the guests who you have on the show and the co-host if you decide to have one. You cannot be superficial on a podcast. The listener will hear it and they will call you out on it as well. This doesn't mean that you have to share everything about you. No, but it does mean that you're gonna have to be authentic about what you are sharing. You wanna be careful to not overshare as well as this will make the listener feel a little bit overwhelmed. Uh, and we'll talk about that balance a little bit later as well. The audience gets to learn more about you and also gets to learn, uh, gets like a sneak peek behind the scenes of what it's like to be in your world, as well as the guests, as well as the guests who you bring in. The goal of the show is that the listener not only gets value of what you stated and you have taught them something, but they also learn something about you that makes them remember you and most importantly, relate to you. Because that relatedness is what brings people back to the show. Yeah, you entertain them, you inspire them, you educated them, yes. But also you share a piece of you that they can also relate to and they're gonna come back again and again and again. All right, cool. So here we are, we did it. Now you know who your listeners are. So the question now becomes is, well, Andre, there's radio. So like, what's the difference between podcasts and radio? Because if you said that, you know, it's no different than Howard Stern, as well as there's no different than listening to the morning shows, then what's the difference between radio as well as podcasts? Very good question. You see, here's the thing. The host of the show, the person who's creating the show is gonna to want to be able to share what he wants to share authentically, right? As well as have the ability to control their show. Here are a couple things that is a difference between podcast versus radio, which is a true, uh, this is coming from a true story and a true experience, which I'll tell you about after we share some of this. So let's say, let's take number one. You get to decide on an audience based on how you market. Where in a radio station, the station decides your audience based on their target market. So um, the client I have, who we have produced a show for, he was on a radio station that really wouldn't reach a lot of the people who he wanted to reach. So what would he do is he interviews a lot of um, amazing African-American community activists who are very busy in the African-American community. Yet, he was put on a radio station that 
does not reach that audience because you wanted to share with other African-American business owners what good is going on and what's happening in the African-American community as well as everyone else. So when we took a look at that, we're seeing that the audience that we wanted to reach, the audience we really wanted to target was not being set. So therefore, we're gonna go on a separate way to market to an audience who we wanna market and have control over. You control the ads that go on your show. We're on a, when you work on a radio station, the station decides the ads that go on your show. Well, if a podcast, you get to decide who do you want to advertise on the show. You get to decide who's your sponsors. You get to decide the price that your sponsors get to pay. You get to decide all the goodies that the sponsor gets by being a sponsor on your show. Radio station is they already have their set. You have no control over that. Uh, you get to control the length of your show. This one is really, really important as you're creating content and maybe you're having this amazing conversation with somebody and the show goes over. Let's say the radio station says that you have only, um, if they give you an hour slot, it's really like a 48 minute slot because of the fact that you have to, add, you have to uh, factor in all the commercials where when you have a podcast, you can go as long as you want, as long as you remember the rule of your listener's intention span. And then last but not least, you get to decide the guest as well as the content of the show. Where in a station, they may, they very well may want to approve the content as well as the guests on the show. Joe Rogan, who we're about to talk about here in a minute, had a wonderful uh, um, a snippet on how to maintain control of your podcast is by being 100% control of your content, as well as the length, as well as everything about the show. Find your own sponsors, find your own people who you want, who want to be part of your show and what you're creating. And don't let anyone else take that control because the second they take that control away, you begin to lose the authenticity of the show because that's what podcast is. Um, one more quick note. With podcasts, you get to decide, is it explicit or is it clean? You get to decide that. You get to decide what's said on the show, what's not said on the show. Again, going back to the content, where on a radio show, on a radio station, sorry, they may not give you that leverage because they still have to follow the, I believe, I think there's 13 swear words you're not allowed to use on TV and radio. I think it's 13 still. If anyone want to, anyone want to correct me on that, I could be wrong. Could be seven. Could be 13. Anyone want to tell me? Let me know. I'll be curious to know what it is nowadays. All right. Just like I said, there's this man by the name of Joe Rogan, and the reason why I bring up Joe Rogan is not because he's a wonderful and one of my favorite podcasters. It's because of the fact that he was doing this long before it got popular and it got cool. So like I said, back in 2004, podcasts began to take off because you're able to download episodes and put it on your iPod to listen later. However, Joe Rogan started his podcast as we know of today as a streaming, uh, listening streaming service um, back in December of 2009, before podcasts hit their second wave of fame in the mid 2000s. And his format is very, very, very simple. He figured out something. He figured out that he's in a very, very unique position where he has a lot of contacts with a lot of very interesting people. And he has a lot of really cool and interesting friends, given that he's done TV, he's a stand-up comedian, and everything else that he's done. So he will bring them into his studio and talk to them about subject matters like what's really going on in the world, such as like Black Lives Matter, um, the roar on drugs. Um, he would talk to a sexologist uh, about the sex life in the, in the world right now. He would bring in a, um, he would bring in a conservative activist, uh, a liberal activist. He would bring in everybody. It doesn't matter who he'll bring in and have a conversation with them. And what's so great is that the audience really relates to Joe when he's talking because he really does sound like he's on the listener's side when he's talking. Um, there's no topic off topic on the Joe Rogan show. 
And it didn't start off that way. It really started off about, let's talk about your lives, share through stories, and then let's have some laughs. But the more and more he began to do the shows, the more and more that it become more serious. And it grew in audience appeal, especially as the audience were beginning to really understand the importance of podcasting and becoming very curious about online radio and wanting something different. As of right now, as of April 28th, of last, yeah, April 20, May, April 28th, Joe has done over 1,600 episodes of his podcast, and he's not slowing down. And he records anywhere between four to five times a week, so he's always on the air. Now, mind you, mind you, you're not going to start off pulling a Joe Rogan because of the fact <laughs> he does have a producer, a sound engineer. He has a lot of thing, a lot of people in place, so that way he can. Um, release the episode very quickly. He's also been doing it for a long time, so there's little to many mess ups, as well as uh, he does video and he does audio podcasts, which is something that he decided to do, and he's done very well at that. And we'll talk about that piece in part two, because that's a really, really important piece that a lot of podcasters miss. Oh, and one more quick thing about Joe is that he leveraged who he knows and their audience. So, which we're going to talk about also a little bit this part and also the next part that he really got to tap into his guest audience to share about his show and was able to use it to boost his own, grow his own audience as well. Okay, then there's wonderful Gary. Uh, we're looking at some podcasts. There's also Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V, everyone's favorite entrepreneur guru, who's always mad at the world and always cussing and throwing the F bomb everywhere. His format is also very simple. It's him doing what Gary V does best, is giving advice. And these episodes can be anywhere from 11 minutes, could be 45 minutes, and it could be some that's an hour. The one thing that he knows though, the one thing about him that he knows is that once you start, you can't stop can't stop unless you say otherwise you cannot stop you're producing content like i said some of those uh some of his episodes are like 15 minutes of him just giving quick advice for 15 minutes and that's it that's a show but he's producing content on a regular schedule and that's what makes him him he's he's really big in consistency no matter he's so big in consistency no matter what it is that he's doing that you 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 know when Gary's going to start something, he's going to go through all the way. Last, another one to look at, actually, not last but not least, but another one to look at is um, Business Made Simple. So Don Miller, who is a famous author, he's done storytelling, marketing, um, he does branding, marketing. He's really big into brand and communication. He has his own podcast. Again, it's these wonderful three human beings, so Don and two other co-hosts, giving advice about growing your business. Pretty much simple, easy. Easy format, 45 minutes to 55 minutes, even less than that. This man is killer. Take note about this man. He is the master of telling people who he is and what he does and what the show is about in 90 seconds or less. Just kills it. And then last but not least, here's another podcast. This is the podcast I'm a co-host on. This is Get Your Barbecue On with Ken Alexander. So with this show, um, it's a show that is geared for backyard cooks where they want to cook and raise their game up on their grilling and their barbecuing skills. And Ken, who's traveled all over the world, shares his experience of the different recipes that he knows, the different uh, um, types of meals that he's barbecued, and how to do it. People love this show because of the fact that they're always thanking him for the tips that he gives. The first half of the show is all about tips. Okay, today we're going to talk about how to, how to uh, grill skirt steak. Okay, what is skirt steak? Let me tell you what skirt steak is. Let me tell you where it comes from on the cow. Let me tell you how you find it and what's going to look like when you go and look for it in the store. Let me show you, tell you how to prep it, what you need to do, what type of marinades that you can make. I'm salivating already because I'm just thinking about skirt steak because it's my favorite steak in the world. Um, 
And then also, uh, this is how you prep your grill. This is how long you grill it for. Here's some tips and tricks on how to make it taste amazing. And then bon appetit. There you go. And it's he always says it's your flavor, your style. He does this and people come up to him, like I said, and say, thank you so much for the tips. It really helped out. We love your show, especially in the grilling tips. And or I tried one of your tips and it turned out awesome. That's the first part of the show. The second part of the show is talking to other his interviewing guests who do work around the community or how are other entrepreneurs and really getting to know them and what they do and and how they're making the world a better place. So that is his show altogether. And as you can see from the shows that we show you from from Joe Rogan to Gary V to Don Miller to get your barbecue on with Ken Alexander, there's a variety of shows and there's, there's no limit to what type of show that you can create. By the way, also in the end, this show gets more people into the restaurant. Why? Because they want to try his food. So he's such an expert, let's try his food. So it's a good way to bring people in. Again, something that we talk about in part two. Podcast, in a nutshell, equals a freedom. And the freedom to do and create whatever you want for your show and for your audience. Understanding, though, that your audience has a very, very short attention span. So the goal is to keep your episodes shorter, less than an hour, less than 90, less basically less than 90 minutes. And then you work your way up to the Joe Rogan three to five hour show, if you want to do that. They are very, very long, but there is a reason why they're very long. Again, we'll talk about it on Thursday. However, Joe Rogan has, he has hit so many ways, so many people and so many uh, um, audience. Oh my gosh, what he's done is brilliant. And again, we'll talk about it on Thursday. So I know, I now know that I motivated you. You're itching now of figuring out, uh, figuring out how to start your own podcast. You are so eager. I have inspired you so much that you are like, yes, let's do this. What do I do to create my own podcast, Andre? Well, well, here are about five elements that you need to have in place to create your very own successful podcast. And we're going to go over them so that way you can start thinking about and begin to create your show today. Like literally today, this Tuesday, May the 4th be with you. You're going to be able to start thinking about the creation of your podcast and start planning it all out. So here's what we're going to do. Step one, you got to figure out what your show is about. <laughs> this is by far the hardest part of the show. And understand that you're going to go back to this question over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Um, before you go anywhere, before you do anything, you got to figure out what you're going to talk about. What do you want to discuss? What's the topics going to be about? And do you have enough material to do like a thousand shows? And I know that sounds very dramatic, but seriously, do you have enough material to talk, to do about a thousand shows? And what do your, what do your listeners want to know? And what questions have they asked you before that you're like, man, I could actually do a show on that because I know so much about that. I, I could do a total show about it. Um, what drove uh, Ken Alexander, my co-host, to start his own show was the fact that so many people kept asking him like questions about grilling or, or cooking and barbecuing and how to like do something different in the kitchen, right? And so he decided, since he's been grilling and barbecuing since he was about 12 years old, that, um, and because of the fact that he's traveled all over the world, tried different type of barbecues from all over, he's been to every continent other than Antarctica, he was like, you know what, yeah, I'm going to teach people how to cook for themselves, especially during a pandemic. Ooh, got a good one there. So he's like, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to give tips and tricks for people who are cooking at home who don't want to eat out every day or can't afford it right now, show them what they can do at home in the kitchen. 
he doesn't run out of content because guess what? There's so much food out there and there are so many things you could do on a grill. Um, and really this is how Get Your Barbecue On was born because of the fact that he's like, you know, let's empower people to cook at home and grill at home. And let's help those people who are backyard cooks up their game. So that way they are the grill master and pit master of their house. Said differently, your title will come out of the topic that you want to talk about. All right, great. So now you have your topic. Now you got to start thinking about your audience. Who are you talking to when you're doing your show? And what are their needs? And what will give them the most value from listening to an episode of your show? You got to remember that sometimes their own people will only listen to one episode and then they may come back to it or they may not. Or if they really hear something that really interests them that they can really powerfully relate to, they will actually binge your show. So they'll listen to as many shows that you have. Um, the question you want to ask also is what do you want them to walk away with? And then go even further and ask yourself, what age range am I targeting? What's their demographic? What did they look like? What's their job? In other words, creating a persona will be really, really important. Um, yeah, really, really important when thinking about your show. Is there a certain demographic that you're really trying to meet? Uh, who is it? So All About the Win, my show, is a show where we actually interview entrepreneurs, local and national, on their greatest accomplishments thus far. And then what we do to make it unique is we add sound effects and music behind the stories that they will share, the guests that is, the entrepreneurs, and to bring that story to life. So we call that old school radio magic. That's basically our, our thing. You know, at first I was like, okay, cool. Well, this is a show it's like for entrepreneurs about entrepreneurs. However, one of my friends came up and said, uh, uh, Andre, I love your show, but it's not for me. And I'm like, devastated. I'm like, but you're an entrepreneur. She's like, yeah, I am an entrepreneur, but it's not for me. And then I talked to another one of my friends who are not entrepreneurs. They're like, oh my gosh, I love your show. It's so amazing. And I got it. This show is about entrepreneurs, not for entrepreneurs. It's about people who either thought about being entrepreneurs or are interested in becoming entrepreneurs, interested of learning more what it's like to be an entrepreneur, or people who are friends and family of entrepreneurs who have no idea what the struggle journey and uh, the juggle struggle and journey is about being a business owner. And it's curious to learn more about their spouse, their son, their best friend, whoever it is in their life that is an entrepreneur. This is a way into their world. When we made the adjustment, oh my gosh, it transformed the entire show. And now we have a clear idea of who we're talking to. Again, the idea of what we're going to talk about is never a, uh, uh, never a finished product, but it is something that you're constantly working on. And listening to your audience, giving the feedback from your audience is really, really important. Important. format of the show. So now that you have your topic for the show, how will you deliver it? Is it going to be just you talking the entire time? Is it going to be a co-host talking with you in a show? Is a co-host going to be there the entire time or maybe you in an interview part? Are you going to be inviting guests? Are you going to have guests? If so, how often? And how long should the show be? And make sure it's less than 90 minutes. Um, with Ken's show, we sat down and we thought about, okay, what are we going to do with this show? How we're going to format it? And we use my white, my wonderful whiteboard in my office, and we'll say, okay, the first part is going to be tips. Second part is asking, you know, answering listener questions, and then we'll check in with me, who's a pit master in training, because I'm learning how to barbecue and grill. And then after that, part three and part four are going to be your guest interviews. Okay, cool. Part three is going to be a little bit about their history. Part four is going to talk about what they're going to do in the future. So that's the format of the show. And that's the format that we continue to work on. Um, you can always adjust the format of the show. I, I advise that to keep it fresh and interesting. 
Um, we do that with All About the Wind. There's a lot of times where we switch up different parts of the show just so that way it's fresh and a listener has no idea what they're getting into and their ears are always going to get a surprise. And recording and mastering. This part is actually probably the most important and the most, um, uh, this is the most real part about, <laughs> about doing a podcast. Because once you have your target, your audience, and your format to show, you now want to get a realistic look at figuring out exactly how much time you're going to be able to devote into the show. You want to be able to keep up with recording. You also want to be able to keep up with the releasing of the show. And you want to be able to set an expectation for your audience uh, so that way they know what day and time you're going to release the show. And also, consistency is very key as well. Like, you have to be consistent. Because remember, once you start, you cannot stop. So you have to be mindful of your time and a commitment it will take to grow your audience. The more shows you do, um, the more your audience will grow and the more consistent you are. Um, editing your show is by far the hardest part about doing all of it. You want to be able to clean it up. You want to delete all the hissing, the ums, the hums, to make sure it's a clean show so that way the listener is not distracting. And you want to make sure that you and your list, your, your guests sound like a million bucks. Everyone on that show should sound as clear as I'm sounding to you right now or as clear as when people talk to you. You want to be able to keep track of how much time it takes to record and how much time it takes to edit a show so that way you can put it in your schedule. Um, we have, I have a sound engineer that I personally trained to be the sound engineer for the show. So she's the one who sits behind the scenes. She's recording all the shows. She's doing all the editing. And then her and I go to get, uh, get together and we listen to the show to make sure that it's mastered and sounds solid before we release the show. Um, that the whole total time to do all about the win, one episode of all about the win is roughly about 10 hours. It takes about two and a half hours to record. And then the rest of the time is editing, mastering, sounding, finding sound effects, finding the music that fits in and making sure that everything seems right. And that's literally 10 hours from recording, start to record to release in the show. Um, so that is something to take note. This is all time heavy, especially if you're doing it by yourself. Okay, you got to figure out how much time it's going to take for you to do it by yourself. Um, side note. So I was editing a five minute piece and it took me about roughly 30 minutes to edit a five minute piece just to give you like a, a measure of how long it takes. All right, I think I skipped a slide. I think I went ahead of myself. Okay, scheduling everything, which I think I talked about. So you gotta schedule everything in your schedule, have a realistic look. This is the slide I wanted to go to about editing. You wanna edit, you wanna master, keep track, and you wanna put that time in your calendar. I'm like, what in the world is going on here? Um, my screen went red and I was like, what in the world? But yes, so basically, like I was saying, you wanna be able to keep track of all your time to make sure that you have accurate time. That way you're not, you're like, oh, I'll just record an episode and then I'll edit and then I'll release a show. And then you're like, oh, crap, like the show's due tomorrow. What am I going to do? Doing it this way is really, really important to figure out how to produce high quality sound. Again, no hissing, no odd sounds in the background. Oh, okay. Cool. A bonus. Script or not scripted. So this is actually the hardest part about, oh, not the hardest part. This is actually like one of the biggest arguments in the podcast community, which is should the show be scripted or not? And it really depends on your topic and what you're trying to create. You will find so many YouTube videos on, on yeah, you can find so many YouTube videos that are, will argue that a show should be natural or a show should be scripted. It's, it goes both ways. If you have a show or want a show like Joe Rogan, where he sits down and he talks for people for hours, there's really no script needed. Um, or, however, if you have a show and you want to make sure that you're going to keep 
uh, you're going to hit on some key points, then maybe a little bit of script is needed. Either way, your goal is to figure out how to deliver your message and provide value to your listeners without confusing them or overwhelming them with useless words or backtracking. You want to make sure that you stay on task so that way your audience will stay on task. And really, here's the thing. The most important piece is, is that first 120 seconds. If you grab your audience's attention at that point and you get to keep it, you won. For that part, I say you script that until you're able to like, like memorize it. Like you can just uh, tar it, like you could just say it without even thinking. Um, Example for All About the When is it's hello and welcome to another episode of All About the When podcast, a show where we interview entrepreneurs about their greatest accomplishments thus far and bring those stories to life with a touch of old school radio magic. This show is for those who are thinking, aspiring, or inspiring about becoming an entrepreneur, want to know what is goes on in the life of being an entrepreneur, or just curious about what it's like to own your own business. That's like the first few seconds of the show. Gives a quick, uh, um, gives a quick. This is what the show is. This is what the show's about. This is the audience. So, you you gotta create your script so that way you grab people's attention very quickly. In that first 120 seconds. Practice, 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 practice. <laughs> Did I mention the practice yet? This, um, it's, it's just, I, I cannot like emphasize this enough. Practicing is so important on your show. Um, even when you write out a script or you write out something, you just, you wanted to say it out loud. You want to say it to people. You want to say, hey, listen to this real quick. And you do your quick, o your intro. You say, does it grab your attention? Does it, does it excite you? Do you want to listen to the show? And the person says, no, you say, okay, what could I do to make it better? You want to continue to practice. Even after you record your first set of shows, you're going to continue to practice. Even after you record it, you're a hunter show. You're still practicing. And the reason why, you get better and better and better as you practice. Never get stuck with, yeah, OK, cool, that's perfect. Like, Really see what else you can do with it and expand upon it. When I have a show, so we record all about the when on Thursdays, we record, get your barbecue on on Mondays. So the week before, I am the weekend, the weekend before uh, get your barbecue on, I am practicing um, my what I'm going to say and what I want to talk about. Uh, a week before all about the win, I'm practicing the introduction, the segues, what I want to say, the topic. I'm researching the guests. I'm doing all, I'm asking questions to myself in a mirror. I'm really prepping myself for the show. So that way, when I step into the show, it's as if I'm doing it live when I'm not really. But what happens is it makes it less, um, less editing later on. And uh, again, this practicing the show allows you to kind of play with different parts of the show as well. I mentioned earlier that on All About the Win, we kind of switch up some parts. We have one part of the show that we uh, adjust every five shows or, or so. And what that part is, it's, it's meant for like entertainment for our audience. And so this past uh, episodes, this past uh, few episodes, we were doing entrepreneur confessions with father andre jones where i would take the role of uh, of being father andre jones and, and the entrepreneur will come and confess their most embarrassing entrepreneur uh moment uh and they were hilarious like it was just so funny to hear what the uh what the guests would say and then the audience just would just love them because they're just like we wouldn't expect that from our audience, from our from our friend, as well as from the guest who, you know, prior to was talking about how powerful they are and everything else. And here they are with their imperfection, if you will. So, again, switch up the show, practice, 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 practice. It does make perfect. All right. So now you're ready to get out there and start recording like Joe Rogan. That means every day, five hours a day, you can clean it up, no problem. Just kidding, you're not there yet, that's okay. 
but let me give you some tips and tricks <laughs> to at least get you started and motivated. So here we go. Tip number one, before you release any shows, before you do any releasing, and we're going to talk about this on Thursday, you want to be able to record three to five episodes of your show. You want to have a stockpile. The reason why is because people generally, when they, um, when they listen to a show and they really like it, they will binge the show. That's, oh my gosh, I am guilty of this. I am so amazingly guilty of this. When I see something that I like, if I hear something that I really like, I will start listening to past episodes. I'm a big professional wrestling fan. There's so many professional wrestling podcasts that are popping up everywhere. Um, there's one show that I listened to that was like, man, this is a really good show. And I ended up, I ended up listening to at least like 14 shows in a matter of a week. And it was really cool because it was coming from a person who is a producer of the show. And he talks like a lot about behind the scenes. Again, which we talked about earlier, it's like getting a glimpse behind the scenes and what they knew about the wrestler, about the promotion, what was happening at the time. It's really cool to hear the bit, uh, pro wrestling from a business perspective. Lots of fun. I got to learn a lot, a lot, a lot. And that's generally what people will do when they find a podcast that they really like, they'll binge it. If they see only one episode, they'll think that you're either beginning or you're not there yet. And they may or may not come back. So have more episodes will allow people to stay there and actually want to be present with you through your show as more and more of the release. Again, stay consistent. Release a new show every whatever day of the week that you pick. We release all of our shows on Saturdays. Why? It's just the day we picked. There is no day better than another. You can look at about 100 of articles that say Sundays will be better, Mondays will be better, Wednesdays will be better, and everyone will say a different day is better. Really, it's what works for you. What works for you? What works for us is Saturday at one o'clock in the morning. So that way, when people wake up on Saturday, uh, Saturday morning, there's a new show there, and they get notified. If they're a subscriber, they will get notified of a show, which we'll talk about that on Thursday. Um, unless stated otherwise. So if you are going to go on a break, you need to tell your audience that you're going on a break. Like this is, this is critical of your podcast. Um, there's a lot of people who will do a podcast and they'll record like five shows and then it will stop. And the listener will listen to it and they'll go and we'll stop as well. See you later. The more informed that you are to your listener, the more that they feel as if you are on you are on their side and that you're given a common cur the common courtesy of saying, hey, I'm taking a break, we'll be back. Right now, all about the win is on a break. Um, we released our last episode, I think on May 1st, I think that was the last time we released the show, and, or the May 28th, sorry. Um, that's a lie. Before May 1st. The Saturday before May 1st is the last time we released the show. And at the end of that show, we said, hey, we're going to go ahead. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in July. So please hang in and you will see more shows in July. So now our audience knows that we're on a break. They can listen to past episodes. They can tell their friends about past episodes. They don't have to keep up with anything. As my godbrother told me at one time, please, please go on a break because I need to catch up on your shows. And I'm behind. I'm like three episodes behind. Go on a break, please. And then when I told him we're going on a break, he was like, thank goodness I get to catch up on your shows. Uh, clean audio works best. Do not go cheap on this. Do not go cheap on your audio. You want to be able to produce clean sound. Either it's a good microphone, a good mixer, as well as a good um, uh, a good microphone, good mixer, as well as a good software to clean it up. We'll talk about all that stuff in uh, Thursday's show. And then most importantly, have fun, experiment. Tell your friends, family, and all your colleagues what you're up to, as well as your clients and your customers what you're up to, and get their opinion and 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 say, hey, you know, hey, I'm really about to think about a show. What do you what what do you hear me talk about a lot? What do I know best? I decided to do all about the win because I love storytelling, but most importantly, I love to I love to sit down, shut up, and let people talk to me. I love hearing people's story, and I love to challenge people into into expanding on their story. And most importantly, I love to have people stand up and see themselves in a brand new way. I, I love it when people are able to see themselves as champions and be able to, to talk about that, not in a bragging way, but in a way that really showcases like, yeah, I'm, 
I'm awesome at what I do. And I'm going to share a story about it. It, I, I, I get moved by every story. It's so amazing. So those are your five tips. Uh, questions. If you have any questions, I want to tell you exactly how that you can send us any questions real quick. Um, we have a free 30 second digital, uh, digital commercial, no strings attached. This is my free offer. All you have to do, you can use this video on YouTube, on, on Facebook, on, on Instagram, anywhere you like on your website. All you have to do is refer a friend. That's all you got to do. Just refer a friend. Send them to this little contact page also, Octavia.social slash contact. That's all you got to do. Say, hey, I got this guy. He's a good friend of mine. Uh, he, he needs your assistance in marketing. Cool. We'll help him out. We got our next session on Thursday, which we're going to go deeper into the podcast. You got all this. You're ready to put your show. Now, what do we do with it? We're going to talk about equipment, promoting on the show, and how to grow your audience and use it for your business. And that, my friends, is my time. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you to Robert and Faith for letting me speak. All right. Thank you, Andre, for being with us. Um, we got a couple minutes left. If there are any questions, drop those in the Q&A box real quick. Um, but we've got, a, again, any questions for Andre? I'm getting that set up. Or we can, so you can save those questions. We can ask them on Thursday. We are doing a two-part series uh, to talk about podcasting and how you can leverage your business. But uh, we are, we're glad for Andre's uh, time and effort to put this together for us and uh, something we were talking about a while back and liked the idea. So we thought we'd bring it to, to the boot camp. So with that, we don't see any questions right now. We're gonna go ahead and wrap up, give everybody a couple of minutes back to their day, maybe hit the restroom break or whatnot before your next meeting you might have at 10 o'clock. But uh, we, uh, again, appreciate everybody for being here today. We appreciate Andre, Andre for his presentation. And we will see everybody on Thursday, Thursday at 9 a.m. If you haven't registered, go onto the website and register for Thursday's session. And we will see you then. Everybody have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks.